Okay, so the next um, little change that we're going to do is um, is the following. You know, typically down here when you're multiplying matrices, it's when you're doing the matrix multiplication that you probably ought to confirm that these matrices are are allowed to be multiplied together, um, and so. You know this this check where they do it up here in the main program, um, where it says uh, that, you know if if one number doesn't match the other number, uh, the uh, you know they print out an error message. What you probably ought to do uh, is do that check down in your subroutine when you actually try to, to call them, because otherwise what's going to happen is you know if this is a general uh, program. And uh, you don't really know if the person has had the wherewithal to, to realize, well, maybe he made a mistake or something. But, uh, but it's down here in this code that you ought to do that check. Now, in here, see, we don't have the row and column of both matrices, so you can't really do it. But that, that it's down in here that, that you ought to do it. Now, typically what you would do is you would do your checks down here. And then the subroutine would return a number to the caller, and that number would be an error code, and that number would, would tell the caller whether or not it was successful. Typically, uh, a zero, which kind of sounds weird because normally zero is false, but a zero return value means success, and anything that's non-zero means an error. The reason that is done is because there's only one success. You're either successful or you're not. But there's multiple reasons why maybe there were errors that occurred. And so by doing it that way, if it's a zero, you're successful. If it's non-zero, you can look at the number itself and tell why it was that you got the error or, or why it wasn't possible to do it. So that's typical of what uh, is done. You can do anything you want, but that's kind of the standard approach to that. So let me show you how you would do something like that. Well what you would do is you're going to change this thing here and you're going to say I'm going to return you a number. Well what kind of number is it going to be? Well maybe it's an integer. So if it's just an error code for example then you know uh, you would ju you just need an integer. If on the other hand you're calculating some number and uh, maybe it's a maximum value or who knows then maybe you want to return a float or something. But uh, what you have to do is you have to tell the caller what it is that you're going to return. Now, if you did something like this and I compiled it, what it should tell me is that uh, it hits the bottom of this routine. Uh, and, you know, when it hits the bottom, it, ju it, it just returns is what it does. And it's going to complain because I've told it that it's going to return an integer number, but yet I don't tell it what it is. So let's uh, build this. And, uh, and you'll see that, uh, that, that it'll give me an error. Yeah, so here, uh, well, this is a warning to K. I should probably fix that, so just keep pop up there. Okay, and so it says integer mat mole here uh, differs by the return type. Well, that we'll get into that, the overloading. Um, first of all, mat mole is redefined because at the top it was a void. Here it's an int. Okay, so I know how to fix that one. We'll go up here and we'll say, okay, we're going to change the prototype so that they all match. Int. Okay. And now we go compile or build. We build the solution. Okay. Matmol must return a value. See that right here? So what it's telling me is that it didn't return it. Okay. So the way you return a value is you get down to the bottom. This is the last parenthesis right there, you see, and it matches up with the matmol. So what's going to happen is when it gets to the bottom, you can return from any place you want. You'd say return, and now you're going to give it an integer. So if we get to the bottom, that was successful. If on the other hand, up here maybe, um, we'll do something like this. If uh, rows in the first matrix, whoops, what did I do? I moved to the rows in... Oh, come on. Let's see. Rows. Ah. Rows in first matrix. Okay, so we'll select that. First matrix um, is equal to 
uh, call, and obviously this is not a mistake, but I'm going to you know, say it is. Okay, if these two numbers are the same, then what I'm going to do is return a 1, which is uh, uh, stupid. I mean, there's no reason to return a 1. But the point I'm trying to make is that you can return from anywhere you want uh, for whatever reason you want, and then you just simply say what it is that you're returning to the main program or to the, to the caller, the person who called you. So that's how you put a return uh, value in there. Um, and here, for example, in the matmol, you notice that I don't set this equal to anything. But since matmol is an integer, I could, if I wanted to, say c equals matmol. And so whatever matmol returns, that's going to be stored in c. But uh, notice that if I build this, there won't be a, an error on that. It succeeded because you don't have to store the value. You you know it's there for you, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Okay, so I'm going to stop this recording and uh, and post it, uh, and then we'll go to the next topic.